What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, continuing on the uh, 59 CJ5 frame. Um, got the uh, frame horn repairs completed. Uh, we got the whole whole new one that made in the previous video. Turned out real nice. Got all the holes drilled minus the uh, top hole for the bumper. You know, I'll drill that here when we put the bumper on. And um, here's the original that I reinforced came out pretty good pretty happy with it um so now we're going to move on to the uh the intermediate rear i guess because um you could consider the uh the, the bumper as as the rear cross member um but anyway the frame spread out which that's why i wanted to do i had a ratchet strap on here to keep it held together you know when i unbolted the um intermediate cross member here intermediate rear cross member um and i'm going to put this v-bracket in so these v-brackets are available reproduction this one is and um they aren't for cj5 um they're for your flat fenders your cj3b's and older um you know i i put this exact same one on uh my cj5 i did uh from years ago and um i remember it you know fitting okay um i had to do a little modification to it but i couldn't remember what and um as soon as i went to put this in here i quick quickly uh, realized that um the flat tab here isn't long enough this is overall is, is shorter um because i believe the uh three being older frames were i think like an inch or two shorter i can i can bring out the book and um you know be exact on it but i believe they were shorter so um how the original one was mounted is uh the flat tab here had uh two holes that shared the holes here for your rivets to hold the cross member in so you had the v-bracket riveted on the uh outside or, or i should say the v-bracket was on the uh on the on the uh inside of the frame and then the cross member went in between each each tab and uh, was all riveted together and then welded welded here and um, you know your end plate so what what we did on my CJ5 is um, it looks to me like I cut about 3 8 maybe a half an inch off of the tab and um, fully installed the intermediate cross member and then just welded it in the uh frame channel so it's not going to affect the appearance or anything you know it's going to be covered up by the body and um it's going to be just as strong you know instead of riveted and welded it's just going to be welded um and you know i don't think the customer is going to be pulling any uh farm implements because you know this this all ties in with the bumper in the uh, drawbar so all right let's go ahead and um get started then all right so i've I figured I'd show you real quick. I got the uh, bumper just hanging on here by magic. And um, you can see how much overhang we have. That's without cutting the tab. So I just threw the uh, cross member in real quick. Just put a few bolts in it. But um, you can see I haven't cut any yet. I figured I'd give it a shot just to uh, double check if I didn't have to cut. But we're going to have to cut. So I'll probably take... I don't know, probably three eighths of an inch off, probably half an inch, just to give me some extra room, and um, go ahead and weld it in. All right, so I, <clears throat> I cut the uh, V bracket. It turned out to be um, three quarters of an inch. I took off, and um, I'll show you that here in a second. But real quick, um, off camera, I went ahead and drew up, uh, tightened up the uh, cross member bolts. And um, went to put the rear bumper on, and it pinched the uh, frame rail, uh, the end of the frame rail is too much. So the reason it did that is because um, the original V bracket, like I explained a few minutes ago, went in between it. So that gap that you know that metals say sixteenth. I mean that's two two sixteenths on a uh, either side. And um, 
So what I wound up doing is I just got these loose here, but on, and then I went ahead and um, put about three bolts on the bumper. Um, I just got to kind of temp in there. Um, they're just hand tight just to make, you know, so it doesn't go in or out anymore. And um, I'm going to use carriage bolts, but I'm out of carriage bolts right now. So I'm just using regular hex head bolts. And then I still got to drill the hole for, for here. But anyway, before we check this for squareness, I'm going to go ahead and um, tighten up all the bolts for the intermediate uh, rear cross member. And then we'll check this for squareness. And then we'll throw the, we'll bolt the plate on there to make sure everything's nice and lined up and then go ahead and buzz it in. All right, so I got the uh, bumper bolts tight. Um, decided to tighten them up. I got about three tight on, on both sides. It's not going anywhere. Got the uh, tie plate installed. Well, not installed, I'm in the process. Um, it, it's gonna be, uh, you're gonna have to twist a little bit because you know your arms um, are gonna be a little twisted. I had to actually bend in the uh, bracket to make it fit, it was real wide. And um, so you just had to, you know, just get you a punch and line it up because uh, the plate is a 3 8 hole for 3 8 bolts. And then the uh, V bracket is about, I think it's like 7 16 So I just got some flat washers on the back, um, you know, so they don't draw through the holes and we got the strength. But when you go ahead and draw up this plate, go ahead and tighten up your center screw, uh, your center bolt all the way till it's tight. That's going to anchor the plate steady for you and then you know just pick pick a corner and then just draw them up equally in the sequence and that's going to bring the uh, V bracket out a little bit and then you want to make sure your plate's nice and flat and it's not bent you know or cocked in any way. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these up and uh, check in. Alright, so our uh, <clears throat> passenger side is uh, nice and snug in there. We got it uh, pretty much all the way against the uh, inside of the frame rail. It's touching nice up in here for the, uh, I guess you call it a finger. I don't know what you'd call this. But um, this is all going to get welded together along within here. So when I had this out, I should have ground this paint off here I only did this one edge and um, shouldn't be an issue once I get this burnt and get it heated up that paint should come right off and then same thing goes with the primer on the inside of the frame the uh, frame rail on the inside has been painted already and it's just primer here so burn through it you know let it cool clean it out real nice and then uh, prime and paint it all again the other side though is uh needs a little coercing that's where it needs to be so what i'm going to do is uh just clamp it to the frame and um probably give it a couple smacks with a hammer to get it bent out some more and then go ahead and buzz that in and then the same thing goes with the finger here uh just gotta looks like when i took out the uh Cross member, I should have cleaned up this a little better. This is where, where the original weld was, right here. So I should have just took the grinder and took a little bit off, but you know, I didn't know at the time it wasn't going to fit. So I'll just go ahead and probably tap that down with a hammer and uh, go from there. So <clears throat> I got the bottom tacked in sit there on camera but we've got a little bow in the uh, frame it it's not really showing up here on video but uh, what's happening is it's getting bound up here on this piece of frame on the, on the, on the frame channel so what I'm gonna do since we don't want to mess with the frame at all, I'm going to go ahead and make a uh, 
a stress a stress relief cut here and that'll cause it to straighten out it'll cause it to go straight here and um, we'll have just a little bit of uh, um, twist up in here but that's just going to be for say maybe I don't know three inches four inches or so if that and um, it'll put a lot less tension and stress on this plate and also look when you're looking at it from the rear it's not going to be twist you know um, probably this uh, this bracket's a little bit you know taller dimensionally than the original um, it just it's just barely clearing the uh, passenger side I mean just barely so all right so you can see what that relief cut did on just by cutting a corner and then um, just a little bit of the uh, straight part out that's how much you relieved it that's how much twist and tension there was on the bracket it's on the uh, bracket so now I'm just gonna go ahead and weld that in and grind it like it was never there and then go ahead and do the other side I right, got the uh, B bracket all welded in got the bumper off because I did a uh, some touch-up paint on it and um, I did that this is the next day um, but now we're gonna put in the uh, rear shock mounts I got some uh, donor shock mounts these came off of my MB and they're gonna fit perfectly um, I think they're CJ2A shock mounts um, they fit perfect I'm so I don't need them anymore so I figured We'll put them on this and um, I haven't seen any new reproductions of these so it's kind of the only option so we got some pretty significant uh, significant damage here um, you can see here this was all rust why it's bent like this I don't know because you know it was the original was riveted and welded and how it got that bend like that and you know the shock mount wasn't bent I, I don't know how this damage occurred pretty strange um, but what we're gonna do to correct it I'm gonna go ahead and put a slice to about right here and we're gonna try to um, pinch the whole thing up pinch it up so it's straight again then weld the stitch and then fill all this in I'm going to try this uh, Roby brushless cordless grinder Santa Claus brought me. I'm going to see how good it does. After I defog my glasses. It was cold here for about a day. I'm just going to go back to the mid-80s again. be nice to have a little break, but that's how it goes. All right, like I said, I'm gonna make this incision about right here, right in the middle. All right, so what I'm going to do to attempt to get this divot out is use uh this is one of the old leaf spring hangers and uh so I'm going to put this plate under here and this old hanger here and use a c-clamp to draw up that plate and hopefully that'll flatten it back out I gotta try to do this three handed. And it's going. Good deal. I'm sure, you really can't see it. My hand's in the way. There we go. Should be a better view.
I'm gonna try to go a little bit more. All right, so a lot better. We got just a small, small little divot. That's gonna be a lot better than it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld in, weld in the stitch here and then fill this in. And then we prime it, probably let it dry overnight and then we'll weld in the new shock, shock mount. Is blowing right through that soft metal. Oh, look out. All right, well, this is going to take a while because it's just blowing through. I'm probably going to put a uh, a plate under here and um, have to get all nasty with it. So I'm going to have to move the whole camera assembly out of the way so I can get this done and check in when, check in when it's done. All right, so still got to grind it and whatnot. I'm just letting it cool down, knock the uh, flux off, but the... Uh, the uh plate i used was actually a piece um cut off the v bracket um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my little die grinder cut it flush um follow the frame rail cut it flush and then go under there and cut it off and cut it off so we'll be left with just a tiny tiny little piece um that way you'll never see it and it'll still be there holding help hold everything together it's going to be 100 percent strong good as new so go ahead and do that and um i'll show you it all ground down and completed all right so here we go got it all ground down it's not perfect i mean it, it's going to get covered up and then there's you can't even see just a little piece of that plate and when i flip it over again i'm going to flip it over one more time uh you know grind it down some more and you know won't be able to tell so now i'm going to go ahead and just prep this for uh some primer and um bolt it up make sure it's square weld it in and uh same thing for the other side all right got the uh rear shock mounts on and primed up ready to go and then um Gonna go ahead and bolt up the rear bumper. So I'm using a carriage bolt. So I'm gonna grind the uh, markings off because we're, you know, this is still only the uh, first layer of paint. And um, don't really need to show you all how to bolt it up, but um, for these bolts, the uh, for your uh, Back bolts here, just use a, uh, hold on, let me zoom out. Just use a uh, extension with a wobble. And um, you can just go behind the uh, frame rail here with the boxing. And then also, that's the reason I got uh, the hole there is to reach the nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bolted on and uh, check in. All right, so I got the uh, battery box cut off, cleaned up. We're gonna go ahead and um, put it back on the frame. It is missing uh, this little reinforcement piece that welded on right there. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and weld the uh, top and bottom, and then we'll go ahead and make a new support bracket. That way it's all lined up and everything, and uh, make it look new again. They uh, cut out this little chunk here. So once I get it uh, welded on there, I'll, I'll make that make that piece while it's on the frame and uh, clean it up a little bit more. I just got it cleaned up enough to weld it and then got the bottom all cleaned up. So, all right, so I'm gonna use a cheap metal clamp to go ahead and weld in our reinforcement piece. It's gonna look better than that. I'm just holding it up for demonstration. Um, but I'm gonna get it welded in and um, check in with you. We're gonna, then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild this edge and uh, I'll go over my thoughts and uh, process on fixing this, so. We're gonna get the reinforcement welded in on a, on the inside. So what I'm gonna do for this, um, to give it, to make it look better and give it a strength back is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, follow this line here. I'm trying to get this focused, I'm free-handed. Follow this line back to here to make it a straight cut and then I'm gonna get a piece of, uh, I, I got some leftover I think 14 gauge sheet metal and um, basically gonna make a flange and then weld it in and um, you know I'm gonna make it a little bit a little bit taller than this to where it'll be easier to bend and everything and then I'll just you know cut it cut it flush and everything so I'll, I'll check in periodically and uh, show you the progress on that so you can kind of get a general idea of uh, how to make one if you you know never done something like this before all right so I got it cut out Use my new uh, Milwaukee cutoff. This thing's starting to become my uh, new favorite tool. Well worth the money. Serves a lot of purposes. And no, I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee. I should be though. So if any of you watching work for Milwaukee, give me a shout out. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and measure. This is a an idiot tape measure with the uh, fractions on there. They they just confused me, so I just used the uh, regular line. So we got a uh, about an inch and a, we got an inch and a sixteenth to the flange here, and then our bend starts at about uh, an inch. So I'm gonna make the uh, piece of metal um, about I'll say about probably an inch and three eighths, maybe an inch and a half um, total width because it's going to leave me enough uh, room for the radius and everything, you know, because it's it's not a very sharp bend. This is a stamp piece. So that should give me enough to come up, and then, you know, we're going to have a little extra on the top here, which will be no problem. We'll just grind it to match. So now I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I already got my uh, piece of sheet metal cut out. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, cut it to that, and then I'll set it up and um, show you all how I do my bends. Um, you know, there's machines and uh, brakes and everything like that. Um, I'll just do it in the vise, on uh, on the anvil part of the vise, and uh, show you that. Started working without hitting record. Um, so I got this line drawn here. This is uh, hopefully where our uh, radius is gonna be, um, a little bit further down. I just drew that mark as kind of a uh, Kind of an eyeball to line it up in the vise. So what you can do is just get you a ball peen hammer, make sure it's clamped down in the vise real tight, and just go back and forth. Hitting it. to hit it too hard.
So here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and test fit this and uh, we'll weld it in. All right, so I got it welded in. This is a different piece than I showed in the previous clip. Um, I had my uh, radius measurement wrong on that last piece. Um, I made it a little too narrow, so it, came, it was too small. So on this, I made it like an inch and a seven eighths total, total width and did the radius at one inch, and the radius matches pretty good. So um, I had to build up this edge here. It's pretty boogered, but I mean, this, this old, old metal is pretty thin. But um, anyway, it'll it'll grind and, and look good once it's done. But I'm just going to take the cutoff wheel, cut it flush, grind it all nice and pretty, grind the welds all nice and pretty, and look like it was never there. And then uh, continue welding up the rest of the box. And then we're going to OSFO it because I didn't want to OSFO it then weld it because, you know, it's just going to ruin the OSFO. And then um, go ahead and install the drawbar. And we're pretty much going to be done with this today. So, pretty excited. Alright, so here's the final product. Still got some wet paint on it. Just waiting on paint to dry. Along with the uh, rest of the frame. So, not too bad. It's just one of them things you're not going to really see or think about. It's going to have the battery on it and then the battery uh, hold down, you know, so just a little extra detail. So I got the uh, draw bar primed. I'm going to go ahead and paint it and um, wait for that paint to dry and we'll go ahead and install it. All right, so now it's time to install the draw bar. It's going to use these uh, shim packs here. They are uh, different for either side. I guess the uh, holes were drilled, um, you know, individually, um, side to side. They're a little off, so just find four that match. And um, they go. I'm running out of uh, video time, but basically, it's going to bolt in through here, here, and then you got your tie plate and then your bolt there so I'll go ahead and check in um, you know I'm running out of room I gotta do some uh, editing on the uh, previous videos and free up some space on the card and I'll show you the final product All right, so here here's where I'm at it's not fully bolted up yet um, <clears throat> a couple ways you can do this uh, the first way, the way I did it is if you're by yourself, um, you know, if you sit in a, if you sit low, you know, on a stool or a uh, bucket or something, go ahead and just pick it up and just put your one bolt in here at the bumper. That'll hold it nice and steady. Um, the other option, if you had two people, would be, um, pick it up and then start um, both your legs or arms I should say both your arms with the shim packs ready to go and have it dangle have it dangle and then pick it up I've done it that way in the past with an extra person and um, it's a little bit easier that way because you um, you don't have to bend the arms back so much and it makes getting the shim packs in a lot easier but either way still going to get accomplished so right now i got everything just finger tight i got to put in these outside bolts here i had these and i started them and had to back them off to get enough uh to pull the draw bar back so we're going to tighten up once i get these bolts in tighten up our sim packs just snug we're not going to fully tighten them yet that's going to bring the draw bar forward then we're going to start tightening up all our bolts back here. And that's going to put a little bit of spring tension on these arms here. And it's going to make it nice and tight and solid. And it, you'll, so you'll see these arms bow a little bit. That's normal. So, all right. 
All right, here's the final product. Just got done putting on the uh, second coat of paint. I'm gonna put another coat on the draw bar itself and the uh, rear bumper once this dries in a day or two. This paint's been taking a while to dry for some reason. But anyway, there we go. So we just got one more thing left, and that is the frame out the outriggers for the body mounts for the to mount the body on the frame. There's two that are going to go on the uh, passenger side, one here and one here, and um, we're using new reproduction ones. They're a lot different than the originals. I'll show you a quick comparison, and um, we do have to modify the new ones. Now here's the uh, two side by side. You see how different they are. So most likely I'm gonna have to redrill this hole somewhere in here to mount the body when we get to that point. And um, unlike the original, I'm not gonna rivet it. I'm gonna bolt it. That way, you know, if I need to remove it and and modify it more to make it make the body fit it's just going to be a bolt on bolt off process but what we've got to do to modify them is we got to oblongate one of the two holes to make it line up um i think my test fitted was the top so i'm going to go ahead and open up that hole pretty pretty big probably till it's like three eighths hole probably up to half an inch and um that should be able to be enough for it to be nice and straight and um, us to get our uh, carriage bolt and nut on. All right, so here it is. It's all finished. Been a lot of work. Now I'm going to take probably about a week off from working on it and get this mess of a shop cleaned up. It's, it's absolute chaos in here. Try to keep the shop as clean as possible, but, you know, sometimes it's hard. Um, next time you... Uh, Next time you see me, I'm gonna have both the, uh, I'm gonna have the my CJ5 and the MB back in the shop in here, and have the frame tucked tucked off to the side. All this junk's gonna be picked up, moved. Uh, I got another shop um, that I normally have for junk storage, so a lot of these spare parts and um, stuff like that's gonna go in there. So it gives me. <coughs> Excuse me. So it gives me some more room in here. But uh, enough talking and uh, just show you the final product. So we got we got rid of that pitting on the frame. It's not it's not a hundred percent smooth. I wanted to leave a little bit, you know, because when they left the factory, there was slight imperfections and everything in the frame. Um. You know, the stuff you're not going to see, I left because, you know, it would have it would have took so much time. You're never going to see it, and um, the Bondo is not adding any uh, extra strength at all, so. So, all right, that's enough of this, so I'm going to... Cut the video off and um, we're going to start on the uh, axles after I get this uh, mess cleaned up and um, we're going to fully rebuild them, take them apart. Um, new bearings, you know, gear set. I haven't inspected the gear sets. Probably, hopefully the gear sets are fine. Um, I'm going to show you how to check backlash and, you know, install the carrier bearings, the pinion bearings, setting your pinion depth your pinion preload, all that stuff on how to properly set up a differential. So if you're you haven't, please like and subscribe. So I know you're there. We got some uh, big plans um, scheduled moving forward here in the next uh, month or two, hopefully. And, um, you know, I'm trying to grow the channel and, uh, you know, kind of grow it as a business. So would appreciate some extra support. So... All right, until next time, have a good one.